Hello and welcome to this week's JavaScript SEO Office Hours. My name is Martin Split. I am in the Google Search Relations team, and I am a little bit of an expert on the um, JavaScript rendering and indexing side of things. So I am here to answer your questions regarding JavaScript SEO problems. And uh, you can ask your questions either in the YouTube posts that we do before these meetups, or you can join these live recordings by uh, joining the link that will be posted shortly before the actual Hangout in the YouTube uh, post comments. Awesome. Thank you very much for everyone who's joining. I see that we are a, a small select group today. Uh, there's not that many questions on YouTube, so we'll see how much content we have today. Um, let's start with the YouTube question. Uh, hi, Martin. From the quick look on the Frontify theme built with ReactJS 2020.frontify.org, uh, can you see any SEO issues there or recommend some improvement? Um, this is actually, I think this is a good opportunity uh, to give you an idea of how I would look into these things. And um, let me just like start a screen share. Um, because I actually haven't taken a look before, so I'll just do this now. And the question is if I can actually get that Chrome window that I just opened. No, it has to be. OK, in that case, oh, OK. I just clicked on the wrong thing and actually have to share an entire screen, which as uh, sorry, an entire window. That's, that's fine. So I would um, start by looking at the theme itself. So the uh, the theme itself was 2020.frontify.org. No, was it not? 2020. Hmm. I'll just click on, actually, I'm just going to copy the link, and then we'll see what happens if I made a mistake. OK. Ah, it's a redirect thing. Yes, I want to go to that site. There we go. I must have mistyped something somewhere. Frontity, not Frontify. I don't know why I said Frontify. Aha, OK. So um, a very quick kind of litmus test would be to just run uh, a Lighthouse audit. And in this case, I actually, you know what? I'm just not going to run all of these. Um, maybe not Progressive Web App. We don't care that much. To just get a rough feeling for how does this website generally uh, work, how well does it work, how fast is it? Uh, that looks pretty good. There are already, so the thing is in the in the SEO audits in Lighthouse, they are very, very basic and they are vendor agnostic. So a lot of Google specific stuff we can't or don't want to put into Lighthouse. Uh, but even here we see some suggestions. Uh, that's a mobile usability, potentially a mobile usability issue where uh, some of the tab targets are not large enough. Um, most of the audits pass. So we do have a viewport. We do have a title. We do have a meta description. Um, in this case, that would be service setup, kind of an issue, not really a, a theming issue. Links have descriptive tags, robots.txt, valid alt attributes and images, hreflang, um, legible fonts, avoids plugins, so it's not using Java or anything. In the performance, it looks pretty good as well. First content full pane could be a little faster, but that's OK. Uh, first meaningful pane, yeah. CPU idle, sure. So that it could be better, but it's pretty solid. I wouldn't worry about that. So that's like the very first stage of taking a look at this that I would do. Um, and then the next thing that I like to do is I like to ask the mobile-friendly test uh, if there's any surprises, any problems with uh, actually getting to the to the content. Oh, great. Yeah, and there I see a car there, and I see a car there, and I don't see cars anymore. Oh, OK. Google doesn't trust my guest browsing window. No more crosswalks. Seriously? Uh, I don't think I have more buses. OK, this. Oh, that was a, that was a cheap trick. Is that a bus, or is that? A truck. No, it's a FedEx. It's a truck. OK. I wish I could machine learn these things and not have to fill them out. Are we good at some point? Or are you showing me more buses? No, that's the red light. So that's what? Ah, that is frustrating. OK. Sorry. 
Uh, I should have just logged in and then I would have avoided all these funky. What? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm a robot apparently. Um, maybe it's because I spend too much time with Google, but who knows? What, what, what do you? Okay, nothing. It's not a bus. Good. Uh, I think I'll cut that from the video because that was just stupid. And here we go. Come on, come on. But yeah, so um, performance-wise, looks good. Uh, the screenshot looks all right to me in the very first get-go. Uh, Mobile-friendly, no loading issues, no surprises. There is something going on with some JSON issue, but we don't care. Like It doesn't matter for SEO. Um, yeah, this, the HTML looks pretty complete. There is, um, can I see if they have a description? That's my computer getting slow right now. Oof, come on. Well, there was. So we could figure out what this is, where the data RH comes from. I'm not sure, um, but it doesn't really matter. Like it looks pretty solid from an SEO perspective. Um, it's fast. Maybe look at the tab target sizes where Lighthouse was complaining because that could also be a mobile usability issue. But besides that, I think this is an okay theme. And that's more or less what I look for. So I look at the rendered HTML, I do a smoke test of the the um, screenshot, and Lighthouse gives you a few pointers as well. So good question, but I don't think there's anything to look at specifically here. I guess the, the then the tricky bit is probably setting it up correctly with your actual content, but the theme itself seems to be fine. Do we have questions from the audience? Any of you having a question while we are at it? Uh, I've got a quick one. Um, it's about how many resources and stuff load in the page that if there's any kind of limits that you recommend um, to make sure something's going to render properly. Um, Good point. I kind of got some arbitrary figures when I look at it. Try and keep them under 50 and try and make sure they fire in like 0.2 seconds. And that mm -hmm. seems to be a relatively sane target. And under that, they tend to get reliably thing, but that's not always the case. And you see pages with way more successfully always render, and sometimes pages with less that don't. So I know there's a lot of nuances to that, but I don't know if there's any kind of guidance. Uh, the general guidance is the fewer, the better, I would say, with the asterisk that um, you want to split reasonably so that caching is effective. So basically, they, we don't really have a hard limit or anything. It's just uh, the more resources there are, the more likely you are to experience that something does not load. Or if you're looking at a user's perspective, from a user's perspective, there's a chance that the network cuts out or some transmission error happens. So the fewer resources, the better. But be reasonable. It doesn't help to have everything in one huge file. Um, because then you can't effectively cache, because then if one thing in this large file changes, the entire file needs to be downloaded. So Googlebot generally tries to be smart about these things by caching very aggressively. Um, so even if one render fails, we will see that it fails, but then we have at least cached like, a bunch of resources already, and then we would retry, and then we would probably get the rest of the resources. Um, if crawl budget is a huge issue, and that is usually true for websites with millions of pages, um, then, uh, then that could be a consideration, like trying to keep the the, um, the number of resources as low as possible. But for websites uh, that are relatively small, that's not an issue. And uh, for for us in general, we are trying to fetch everything we can, and we use aggressive caching to alleviate the number of resources. So that's why you see websites with lots of resources doing well as well as websites with small number of resources. And sometimes things just go wrong. And then it doesn't really matter how many resources you have. If it's that resource that is critical and we are not fetching it, then we have to retry. But we are retrying. So that's at least good. But that's a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a 
it's a very subjective thing and a very nuanced thing. As you said, you want to make sure that you are taking a look at your specific situation and judge based on that. There's no like general formula or silver bullet that, that can be applied to this question. I could say it depends. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, one last YouTube question, and then I'll ask you again for audience questions. Thanks, Dave, for the question. Uh, hello, Martin. I have a new site where each in each article, comments are enabled by users. So users can comment on articles, OK? These comments are grouped in the HTML code within a JSON LD called comment with different attributes like author text and date. I've seen that Googlebot renders these comments in the HTML view from the mobile friendly tool. But I don't want to be indexed in search because there are comments with no SEO value for the page. How can I manage the situation? Generally speaking, you don't have to. Um, there, like the fact that we render something. I mean, generally speaking, we index everything that is on the page generally. Um, but if the comments are user generated, we are relatively good at a figuring out that this is user generated content, um, and b it doesn't really matter. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt to have these comments there. It doesn't give you any benefit. But I would not. This is one of these cases where I think you're looking at a non-problem. And when there is a non-problem, then you don't have to solve anything. That's why I would advise against trying to come up with a clever way of hiding. There are definitely ways of hiding things uh, from Googlebot's view, but I just would not. Um, because there is a chance that you are shooting yourself in the foot by creating something that is less stable, less robust, or that you accidentally overshoot. So for instance, to give you a very simple example for this, one thing is if these comments are fetched by a script on your website, let's say like you have a comments.js file um, that actually fetches these comments from the back end and puts them in the, in the content, you could robot away the, the comments JS, and then we can't fetch the comments JS, and so we can't execute that JavaScript, and so we can't actually fetch the comments. But if you play around with your robots.txt, you might end up accidentally, maybe, blocking more than just that, or like, I don't know, block all the JavaScript, and now your main content doesn't show up anymore. So then in trying to fix something that wasn't a problem in the first place, you actually made the problem, or you, you created an actual problem that wasn't there before. So I would advise against worrying too much about this, uh, unless you have very, very good reasons to. Like, I don't know. Um, if, if the content uh, is very hard to distinguish from the main content or something like that, then we might not see that it's user-generated common content. But if it is just comments, as you would normally mark them up, and there is sufficient content on the page, then don't worry about that. It's, it's more risky than useful. All right. Uh, we have exhausted our questions pool from YouTube, I think. I will check the previous JavaScript SEO office hours, because I know that sometimes people post after the actual Hangout into these posts. But do we have an audience question in the meantime? Oh, Search News was playing. That was loud. Do we have an audience question that we could look at? Not today. Um, fair enough. Let's have a look. Maybe we have something in the previous one. Mm. I think I answered that one previously, but I can answer it again. My crawl rate is very low. Um, I lost traffic. Is it because of that? No. Uh, crawl rate has no quality indicator or like signal of something positive. It just it's possible that your server was responding with a five hundred for some requests, or it's possible that um, we just have a version of the content and know that the the change frequency is low. In which case, why would we crawl again, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Uh, it's not a problem, per se. Uh, 
if you're running a single page application and it uses render server side uh, client side rendering and the HTML preview shows a blank page, um, you want to figure out. So it, I'm I'm assuming that you mean the rendered HTML in any of the testing tools that we provide, like the URL inspection tool, the mobile friendly test, or the rich results test. Uh, if you see blank HTML or like an empty page HTML that doesn't have the actual content in it, uh, check if you are roboting any of your resources, like any of the JavaScript that fetches this stuff. Um, if anything wasn't loaded properly, that's something that you want to look into. And last but not least, just double check what could be the reason for this. I mean, that I can't answer that question because it's like saying my car doesn't start. What what's happening? And it's like it can be anything. It can be the battery is dead. It can be that you uh, that you have no fuel. It can be that it's like the the it's still locked somehow or whatever. Like it can be so many different things. And that's the same here. Um, you want to be a little careful with that, but basically just like try to try to make changes in the application and simplify things in the application until you get a positive render that includes the HTML and rendered HTML, and then try to figure out what breaks it. Uh, I call or I use a technique that's called bisecting. So I have a situation here or a version here that doesn't work, and I, I know I had a version here that did work. Let's say there's six six months in between. I jump three months back. Does it work or not? If it works at this point, then that means that my, my search radius is now only the last three months. Then I go one and a half months back. Basically, I jump from, so now I'm, I'm three months back. I jump one and a half months uh, to the front. Still works here, so it must be in the middle here. And then I basically just like iteratively jump closer to a version that will break. And eventually, you find the versions like works here, doesn't work here. And then you know what the changes are that were made between the working version and the broken version. And that way, you can figure out what could potentially be the problem. And this is why I'm so happy that we have the newer tools, because previously, you had a screenshot uh, in the old fashion render, and that didn't really tell you anything. It's just like, yeah, it's broken, and I see it's blank, but that's pretty much it. Uh, and then trying to figure out what specifically broke that last bit that, that pushed it over the edge. Uh, was not that easy. It's a lot easier now. You can use uh, tools like Local Tunnel or Ngrok to put your local development version into a publicly reachable URL temporarily so that you can try this out with the testing tools. Um, but yeah, that's what I would do. All right. If we don't have any further questions from the audience, then I would say this was a short uh, office hour, um, more like an office half an hour. Any questions from the audience? So just a very quick one, if that's OK. Uh, sure. When you call something like an API, if you have a no index X robots header on that API, that's not a really an issue, is it, for rendering? I don't think that's an issue. Uh, I haven't tested this. That's a very interesting question. I should def definitely have a look at that. But uh, normally, we would fetch the API call um, because it's not roboted, it's just no index. Yeah. Uh, and then we would get the data back and use that in rendering. But I don't think that no index on, a, on an API makes any difference, really. OK. That's what I would ex expect. I would test that, because I'm not 100% sure about this. But from logic, that should be how it behaves. Good question. I like questions where I don't know the answer, and I, I actually have to test. It's good. Awesome. In which case, thank you very, very much for joining. I'll post into the youtube.com slash Google Webmaster slash community the uh, thread for questions for the next office hours, which will be on Wednesday, the, ah, oh, what day is that? Third of June or something, I think it is. I think it's already June, but I'm not sure. Um, where's my calendar? Uh, next Wednesday is the 3rd of June. Hey, I'm actually not bad. Uh, so on 3rd of June, we'll have another JavaScript SEO office hours. Um, I'll leave a thread on the uh, community tab of our YouTube channel where you can ask your questions. And then I'll also post the link to the, meet, uh, to the Hangout there if you want to join the recording. Thank you so much for joining my little audience here in the, in the uh, Hangouts call. Uh, it was a pleasure. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a great time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Thanks for joining.